What's up? What's up? It is Stephen, your friendly neighborhood anesthesiologist, critical care fellow, medical ethicist, podcaster, whatever, you name it. And I am back to share more about my experience in fellowship. I uh, got a little busy over the last couple of weeks, um, but my goal is to kind of share these videos every, it was a week, but it's probably gonna be like every two weeks to once a month, maybe. Um, just for everybody that's interested in critical care anesthesia, interested in critical care medicine, interested in, um, you know, whether you have family members that were in the ICU or you're just curious, I don't know who this is for, but uh, I'm just gonna do a little video log and talk about my experiences in fellowship. I am now just starting my third month and it's going really well so far. I'm at a large tertiary medical center. That means we see a lot of like crazy stuff. A lot of, um, it's super high volume, very high acuity. My first month I was in the neuro ICU. My second month when I just finished, I was in a medical ICU. And as a fellow, again, I think I mentioned in a previous video, I do a month in the neuro ICU. I do two months in the medical ICU, three in the surgical ICU, three in the cardiothoracic ICU, then there's some elective time. And it really helps to get an exposure to all of these different specialties and different styles of intensive care medicine. So absolutely loved that last month in the medical ICU. The medical ICU folks are so incredibly smart and I got to work with the medical ICU fellows. The way their system worked, they usually run about like 30 patients or so in the medical ICU. And it's divided into two teams. There is There are two uh, pulmonary care attendings. Each attending has a pulmonary care fellow on service. And then there's like two senior residents and then two or four interns. And the interns can be like from a variety of specialties from anesthesia interns to ophthalmology interns to, you know, whoever's doing an internship. And so every day, if somebody's on call, one team's on call and accepting patients. And at seven o'clock, they'll start with a teaching case. That's what I would show up at seven. We'd go through a teaching case. The fellows would talk about something and, and, and just do some teaching. And then the teams would split. I would go with whatever team was admitting patients that day so I could really see the undifferentiated patients because as an anesthesiologist, we're oftentimes seeing patients that have come through the surgical ICU, right? They're, or come through the ER. They're not our patients per se, they're the surgeon's patients. The surgeon knows, oh, they need their appendix out or they have a bowel perforation. So I don't really need to figure anything out. I just need to figure out the best anesthetic to provide. Again, but that is why, you know, it helps to, as an anesthesiologist, we would have gone through medical school for four years where we rotate through all of these specialties. We rotate through surgery and through obstetrics and gynecology. So we've been on like the operative side of all these things and we've seen it uh, firsthand and then in four years of residency, we see a lot of this stuff from the anesthetic side. So it helps to be able to kind of have that crossover and that overlap. And, um, but what I hadn't done since intern year was actually like go down to the ER to like evaluate patients from a medical perspective and figure out what is going on, what's wrong, how do we fix it, make a difference with diagnosis from scratch. So it was really good to see that, especially with the incredibly high acuity. I was able to do a little bit of teaching. I gave uh, a lecture about airway management to the residents and was able to provide like context for a lot of the surgical things that we encountered in the ICU. So that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed working there and just learned so much. Um, the day would start at seven. We would round. Now we did round for quite a while. So some oftentimes we'd round from like seven in the morning to 11 or noon, but typically at 10 o'clock, I would leave and go to the morning report that they hosted, which would be um, about a half hour, 45 minutes. A fellow from the pulmonary consultation service would come and present a case from Palm Consults. Then we would do a case for the medical ICU. A lot of the pulmonary care attendings would join these conferences and they would share their opinions and their um, advice and help breaking down stuff and like the way their minds work. Like, so, so super smart. These folks were like, I mean, they wrote textbooks and they wrote seminal papers and all that stuff on a lot of these topics. So it was just a super immersive experience. 
being able to sit there and learn um, a lot of medicine stuff. Um, after morning report, I would usually like go somewhere and read. So we have at two o'clock every day, um, Monday through Thursday anyways, we have like a lecture series. So on Monday, we're learning about uh, trans thoracic echocardiography. One of the cardiac anesthesiologists is kind of teaching that those concepts. And on Tuesdays, we go over like the original research for a lot of like basic physiology and pathophysiology. And then on Wednesdays, we go through um, it's a lot of like the research behind why we do what we do in, in ICU. So we're going into, you know, we'll read three or four papers for a Wednesday conference on ARDS, the management of ARDS, what studies showed actually worked in acute respiratory distress syndrome. So we look at a lot of that, that groundbreaking research. So we looked at proning, a couple papers, two papers that showed there wasn't any effect. And more recently, it showed that, oh, proning helps. And then we discussed this amongst ourselves as fellows, along with our anesthesia critical care attendings, about proning and what we saw in COVID and how it actually did help and, and was some benefit. So um, extremely, extremely valuable to read all of these papers, a lot of reading, um, but again, to be able to work with and share ideas and concepts with other like-minded folks, it, it's just an invaluable experience. We do, um, there's three anesthesia critical care fellows, and then there's um, three surgical care fellows. So we all get to work together and to kind of share and bounce ideas off of each other and see how we each manage things differently from our respective training pathways. Um, I just finished up day one in the surgical ICU. So I went from the neuro ICU to the medical ICU. Now I'm in the surgical ICU. Um, I, it's kind of like my bread and I, I love the surgical ICU. We get transplant patients like kidneys, livers, um, kidney livers, pancreas transplants occasionally. And we see some thoracic cases. We see a lot of trauma because of where we are as a, you know, trauma center in Chicago. So um, I, I just, you know, I love the surgical ICU. And every week we're getting uh, an attending either from the surgical side of the house or anesthesia. So we get to just have this immersive experience. We met our new team, which includes... Um, this time of year, the urology intern, there's an anesthesia resident, there's a general surgery resident, and an emergency medicine resident. Um, they're kind of on for the month, and then I'm on service with three of the critical care fellows. So it's been a great experience. I'm learning tons. Highly, highly, highly recommend critical care anesthesiology. If you're interested in anesthesia, if you're interested in critical care, like, it, I just find it super duper rewarding. Um, I'll continue to try and keep you posted along the way. It's going to be a super busy month. I think I went in at like six in the morning and um, usually like Mike left there at like 630. So it's gonna be a lot of work. It's gonna be a busy month. But I'll try to like post videos every two weeks, maybe, maybe once a month. I don't know. Um, thanks for everybody that sub subscribes. Like it's, it's cool that people actually listen to these and watch these videos. And I'll see like every now and then somebody subscribes and I'm like, okay, that's cool. Somebody finds some value in this. Um, also check out the Black Doctors podcast if you're interested in different careers in medicine, if you're interested in an increasing diversity in medicine or just experiences of other physicians. We have the conversations like, what's it like to actually be a neurologist or a plastic surgeon or whatever. And I have those conversations in the Black Doctors podcast which is available wherever you listen to podcasts. Obviously, it kind of focuses on um, Black and underrepresented minorities in healthcare. But, I mean, we're just talking about medicine. So, here's that. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, Stephen Bradley, MD. You can see all my music stuff um, on Instagram. So, thanks for listening. Thanks for hanging out. Hope you found this helpful. And stay tuned. There's more where this came from.